Today we're talking about bodies, our bodies, your body, my body, your friends' bodies, your significant other's bodies, those bodies. Imagine 2023 really is the year you, we finally let go of any and all body shame that we've carried over the years. But before we meet our guest today, just look at how the body conversation is still so emotional. Take a look. Body positivity is evil. So for anybody who's like, you go guy or girl for eating like crap and not working out, you're basically giving them a death sentence. There's a war over the words we use to describe our bodies. Grammy-winning superstar Lizzo recently went viral after blasting social media commenters for obsessing over her weight, calling the discourse around bodies tired, and she's not alone. Mm, yeah, uh, we have a stomach. It's allowed to take up space. It won't come off. Like, if I can take it off, put it in a backpack, I would. Now that we're having more honest conversations about bodies, what are the right words? I'm more confident now as a size 14 woman than I ever was in my entire life, and this is the biggest I've ever been. Body neutrality is believing that no body is beautiful or ugly, it's just everybody is a body. Award-winning poet, author, and activist, Sonia Renee Taylor, has started a movement with her own powerful words, challenging the status quo with radical self-love. The body is not an apology. Let it not be forget-me-not fixed to mattress when night threatens to leave the room empty as the belly of a crow. The body is not an apology. Sonia Renee Taylor has unapologetically taken the world by storm with those six powerful words. My body is not an apology. And she inspired this hour today about the new body language. Tam fam, please welcome award-winning poet, author, activist, and transformational leader, Sonia Renee Taylor! things to talk about and unpack. Yes. But let me just start where it is. You walk out those doors and you're saying my body is not an apology, knowing the first thing people look at, your body. Yes. The body. That's what we do. Yeah. You want to transform not how we look at, how we talk about it, how we make people feel about their bodies. Where did it start for you? It's a live show. Now we can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, you know, I think it's always been moving in me, but there are some moments that catalyzed it. And there was a moment with a conversation with a friend back in 2010, and she was afraid that she might have an unintended pregnancy. And I'm the nosy friend is the way that I talk about that. Uh, with love, nosy friend. Uh, and so I was asking her about some of her sexual health choices, because I also used to be a sexuality health educator. Uh, and I was asking her why she wasn't using protection with this casual partner. And my friend had cerebral palsy. And she shared with me that, she, that because of her disability, she felt like it already made it difficult. And so she didn't feel entitled to ask this person to use a condom. And I said to her, and I'm, certain this was channeled through me. I said, your body is not an apology. It is not something you offer to say sorry for my disability. And, and when those words came through me, I was clear that I wasn't just talking to her. I was like, oh, there, little girl, there's a word. There's right. a message in there for you. Right. And if there's a message in there for you and a message for her, there's a message for us. For us, there's a all message of for us. us, all of us. You know, I gotta tell you, I, I look to see how our audience reacts to things. And, you know, we played that video montage about the conversation. And there you have people saying, you're giving people, what is body positivity? You're just giving people permission to not be healthy. That's the common zeitgeist. I, got, I had a guest on who's talking about her eating disorder, and she happened to be a plus size person. I have never been attacked so much by trolls because we were having a body conversation with a woman who was plus size talking about her body, which is nobody's business. And then they felt the need to not just attack her, but attack me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because it's not actually about bodies. What is it? That conversation is about power. Mm. That conversation is about how do I get to decide what particular... And if you'll notice, most of those conversations come from men. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that conversation is coming from a place of your responsibility, woman, is to be desirable to me. And if I don't find your body desirable, then your body is unacceptable. Mm. Right? <laughs> and so... If we're not having a conversation about the systems that tell us whose bodies are okay and whose bodies are not, then we're always going to be having the wrong conversation. So if these men in particular, and yeah. to be honest, and that's mostly that we're on there, at yeah. least that's what their Twitter picture mm -hmm. saying. Right. Um, they're taught that. Yes. You know, absolutely. no one is born looking at someone and saying, I... I, I the things that Lizzo, for example, is subjected to. Yeah. To the point where she has to say, I'm tired of this. Yeah. Tired. She can't revel in a single moment. Right. And now you look at her, but every day women feel the same way. Like we saw in the clips. You want me to cover up, but you want me to put it... You All day long. Yeah. But it's... these people who, who do it are taught. Absolutely. Well, we're all taught. Messages about what's a good body and what's a bad body, mm. right? And we're not just taught that message about size, we're taught that message about gender, about race, yeah. about age, about ability, right? Constantly, we are being given messages that say, this body is a worthy body, mm. this body is an enough body, and this body is a failing body. And we look in our society and we can see how we reward the bodies that we say are enough and how we under-resource the bodies that we say are not good enough, right? And so until we dismantle the idea that there is any such thing as a good or a bad body, we'll continue to not only impact people's self-esteem and self-worth, but we'll continue to have inequitable and unjust systems in the world, yeah. right? Yeah, because this is... And what you talk about in your journal of radical permission, what you talk about in your book, this is not just about who gets to be on magazine covers. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Like, that's irrelevant. It's about who gets to have proper medical care, who gets to have housing, yeah. who gets to not be indiscriminately killed by the police. Yeah. Who... These are the questions right. that we're talking about when we're talking about bodies. Yeah. All right. I got goosebumps and we're just getting started. <laughs> we're nine minutes into this one. Hang on. We got more to come. We are embracing self-love in a way never done before. You're going to want to see this transformation. It's, my team did it on this show. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are live in Camp Fam. We're talking about redefining words and conversations we're having about our bodies. Best-selling author Sonia Renee Taylor is back with us. She says in her new book, Journal of Radical Permission, can help all of us start loving ourselves, our body, in an entirely new radical way. And some members of the TAM fam have already been working through Sonya's Journal of Radical Permission, and they're here with us today. Please welcome Victoria, Denise, and Karan. Thank you so much for joining us. Sonya, before we talk about the journey, what is the goal when you say radical permission? Yeah. So first, I want to clarify. The Journal of Radical Permission was co-written by myself yes. and my wonderful co-author, Adrian Marie Brown. And it's, I would call it the, like, next level. Like, first, the body is not an apology. It's like, okay, let's actually get in touch with this story we have about our own bodies. Yeah. And then once we actually feel like we've done some of that, the Journal of Radical Permission says, where have I bound myself up by the rules of society? Mm. Where have I led a smaller, um, less powerful, powerful, less inspired life because of what I think dot, dot, dot will say about it, right? right? And how do I unlock that in myself so that I can live my most magnificent, elevated, exciting life Ooh. as defined by me? I love it. As defined by me. So, Karan, you started working with the journal and it made you think a lot about your late teenage years. Yes. What does that look back feel like? Because a lot of people like to run from the past. Right. For, 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 for a lot of reasons. I think with the support of Sonia's work, um, it made looking back not so hard because I was able to see how courageous I was and giving myself permission to be a dancer, which led me to college on a scholarship, which led me to New York. Like, all of these things came from radical permission and courage. What did you say. need to give yourself permission to do? to feel like I could be my fullness, um, like share my fullness with the world. Yeah. Uh, I needed to give myself permission to be courageous and to go against um, what people told me or how people told me I should express my gender, mm -hmm. um, how people told me I could be in a body and heal through my body. Um, and dance 
help me do that. Help me like take agency over what this body is doing for me. I, I love that each of you have had this radical permission process. Denise, for you, what was that radical permission you wanted to achieve? Um, I am in my 50s, and uh, just society has been saying, like, age is bad, age is bad. Mm -hmm. You're aging, I'm less than, I'm yeah. not going to be able to do this. And this has made me feel, thank you, thank you, um, that I believe that it's possible. That just believing, believe. believing in possibilities. <laughs> just period. Victoria, what was it like for you to start on this radical permission? Because what were you looking for out of this experience? Um, I think mm -hmm. I had started to recognize within myself struggles, things that just weren't lining up. I was having a lot of anxiety, a lot of physical symptoms of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And my body started changing, as it does in your mid-20s. And I had to learn how to accept the new body that I had yeah. and love it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I started through the book and the work started sort of untangling all these lies I had been told <laughs> about, about how believe. I should feel. How you, that yeah. I believe that I'm not healthy, even yeah. though I'm the healthiest I've ever been. Right. <laughs> even though I'm the biggest right. I've ever been, it's okay, right. you know? Um, yeah, it, it can be really hard to untangle all those images and to stop comparing yourself to You others. know, I, I love that you agreed to come on the show and, and this mantra of my body is not an apology really means something. And it is, it's so I thought about it so much last night and my team wanted to show you that you are, gosh, you are definitely people who will today make someone feel a lot more comfortable in their skin. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to, for the first time, take a look at the screen there. You've been broadcast in Times Square, the crossroads oh. of the world. <laughs> this is up right now, right outside the GMA studios down the street, the hashtag body's not an apology. There you all are. On, these are the photos you took. You put the hashtag no apologies on. Let me get that shot one more time, because I don't think I've even ever been up there. Can we see it again? I mean, there you are. Wow. 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 You know, wow. all of you. <laughs> you know, right. Sonia, we know the statement, you know, the revolution will not be televised. Lies. <laughs> it's on the big screen right outside yeah. of the <laughs>